Okay, today I'm going to be talking about some really simple body measurements that you can easily take on your own that are really well associated with potential for increased risk if you're outside of the suggested ranges. And all you need is a flexible measuring tape. And even if you don't have that, most people have uh, a normal measuring tape lying around. So if you just have a piece of string that you can use to take the measurement and then lay that out along the measuring tape to get the value, then that's just as good. Now I stole this from a sewing kit that I found in the house, so you don't even need a medical grade uh, measuring tape. So here we go. So the measurements that we're going to take are our neck circumference, waist circumference, and hip circumference. The reason we want to measure the neck is, uh, or the reason we want to measure all of these things is because they can be plugged into a formula which can give us an estimation of body composition, in in, in, including how much body fat you might have. It's also important to know your neck circumference for your potential risk of obstructive sleep apnea, which is something that I'll talk about at another time, a very commonly undiagnosed condition. And then there's another uh, metric that we can calculate called the waist to hip ratio. So you need to know your waist and your hip circumference. You divide one into the other, and based on where that number falls out, then we again get a reasonable idea of whether or not somebody has increased abdominal fat or visceral fat, which we know is the stuff that's really highly associated with metabolic disease. The first thing we're going to measure is your neck circumference. <clears throat> so that's easy enough to do. <clears throat> so you just take the measuring tape, put it around your neck, and where you want it to fall is exactly where you would have a button-up shirt. So both men and women, I think, wear button-down collars. And what you want to do is just bring the measuring tape together <clears throat> so that it falls just below your Adam's apple exactly where the top button of your shirt would go. Don't pull it so tight that you're seeing stretching of the skin, uh, but it, you also don't want it too loose so that you can fit your finger behind it. You just want it kind of snug. And then you'll check and see where you fall, and that's your neck measurement. Record that, and then you can move on to the next part. Okay, so for waist circumference, the important thing to keep in mind here is you want to determine where the narrowest part of your abdomen is. For most people, that's going to be about one to two inches above your belly button. And you can, if you're wearing form-fitting clothing, you can look at yourself in a mirror and you can see where the greatest taper is in your abdomen. Kind of turn sideways, make sure that you're getting the right spot. And then, again, simply just put the tape around yourself. This is often easier to do with somebody else, but easy enough to do on your own. And you bring the two ends together. Now the important thing here is making sure about your timing with your breathing cycle. So you want to take the measurement at the end of uh, an expiration. So you take it, I usually tell people to take a deep breath in and then a deep breath out. And then when you're there comfortable at the end of your uh, breathing out, that's where you grab the tape, and that's going to be your measurement. Whereas the waist is the narrowest part of your abdomen, your hip circumference is going to be what you see in the mirror as the widest portion. And that has to be around your glutes or buttocks. So you're going to find that part in the mirror, and then again, take the tape, put it around the back of your glutes, and then I usually just bring it together in the front off to one side and the breathing doesn't matter so much here because you shouldn't be breathing down into your pelvis uh, and then you'll record that measurement. Now once you have all those measurements then that's great those can be provided to your healthcare professional for their documentation and these are things that you can also follow over time so if you're somebody who's on a weight loss journey then you can watch these things come down as you successfully lose weight. But the other thing that we're going to do is take the waist circumference and divide it by the hip circumference to get your waist to hip ratio. 
and this is the important measurement that is most associated with abdominal fat. So for waist to hip ratio numbers for women, ideally the waist to hip ratio should be less than 0.8, and for men it should be less than 0.95. Once that number gets up above 0.9 for women or 1 for men, it tells us that the abdomen is actually increasing in size in proportion to the hip circumference, which shouldn't change all that much. And that tells us that there might be excess abdominal fat that needs, uh, that needs attention. If you have any questions about this, feel free to leave them in the comments. And of course, while you're here, please subscribe, give us a like, and uh, we'll see you next time.